This is Frank Rizzetta, the maestro. Look at the composition. Everything about that is perfect. She's perfect. The monster is perfect. The background is genius. Whoa. This is erotic as a piece gets. It's the best butt in painting. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's not like brilliant. I can't believe that you have these. Frank Miller. In your home. I'm actually taking it out on the road for people to see it in person. Oh, I, I like her ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ago I get a call from Robert and he's like Harry come over to my house I got something to show you and I come into the house and he's like okay you have to close your eyes and then he got behind me started pushing me I was being pushed for a while and then next thing I know I open my eyes and I'm in a room filled with Frank Frazetta paintings and you know, growing up, my, my father was one of these guys who uh, opened the first comic shop in Texas. I was raised in the era of all these paintings coming to life. I mean, the prints were coming in store, we were selling stuff. So much detail in those prints from the 70s just was not captured at the time at all. I mean, the Moon Maid, where uh, you see Frank Miller like losing his mind over the butt, like, on the print, you can't see the redness on the butt from riding the centaur. Like, it makes perfect sense. There's a logic to why her butt is red. She's not being spanked, and she's riding a horse. You know, but you didn't get that detail from any of the books that you look at, any of the, I mean, this is really a chance to see the master's exact color composition yeah, the way of... it's not filtered through a digital lens, it's filtered through your eyes. That's just amazing. You have those, to see it. Those, when I grew up with those books, I discovered them in a bookstore. They had put out this Ballantine series of four Frank Frazetta books of his art. And uh, I would cut them out and put them on the wall. And I thought those were amazing. But once you see the original and compare them, you can, I can't, they look like Xerox copies compared to the original. Have you ever tried to trace them or try They're to so, them? My, my books are so full of indentations from all the times I traced them. That's kind of where I learned how to draw anatomy was from tracing Frazetta books. 
And um, Frank really preferred that people saw them in person. And what was really unique about Frank Frazetta is that he, even though he was an illustrator, most people who were illustrators lost all their original works because they were works for hire. They were not considered fine art, they were assignment work. Frank kept them, all his originals, most of them, and, and um, had them in a museum set up adjacent to his house there on his ranch where you could go make the pilgrimage up there and see um, his work. He wanted people to see it, you know, in, his, in all its power. And um, I got to go visit him to go get some of that juju to see if I wanted to do um, Princess of Mars. And when I decided not to do that movie, I did Sin City instead. I, um, I still wanted to do a Frank Frazetta movie. I played around with the idea of doing a Conan movie. And then also, uh, until finally, Harry and I thought of getting the rights to Fire and Ice and doing Fire and Ice, which is the, the only film Frank ever worked on with Ralph Bakshi to try to create, recreate his world. And even then, that was done on more cell animation. It didn't really capture the look of his paintings. We thought, what if we could take the look of his paintings and step into them the way you step into the world of Sin City and do that with Frank Frazetta. And so um, I have some video here of me visiting Frank Frazetta in 2005.